sign in button you will be uh, taken to this page uh, so this is sign in so you just have to enter your default user id or the email id which using which you have created your aws account so my is shubham9646 at the rate gmail.com and then you have to perform the security checks yep and then it takes you to the password bingo so we are inside uh, our aws management console so so you don't have to fiddle with much things here because we just have to look into the ec2 so i have already visited ec2 quite a times then uh, that's why it shows me in re under recently visited services or else if this kind of interface is not visible you just have to make use of this search bar on the top and search ec2 here and you'll be getting ec2 on the very top of the window start the ec2 this is the dashboard of the our instances here you will be able to see your uh, how many instances running and other sort of configuration related to that instance so if you don't have any uh, instance running then you have to uh, click on this uh, orange button uh, which says launch instance and you will click on the launch instance drop down again it will take you to the uh, first step will be that to choose an Amazon machine image. So Amazon machine image is nothing but uh, your default OS which you want to boot on your instance. So for this tutorial purpose, I'll be using the Ubuntu. It's easy accessible. All the available packages are like on the top of your command line. So so this I'll be using this 18.04 version because I've already uh, built up some packages and default files for it. So it's always convenient to use the one which you usually use in your local one. And if you don't have any preferences, you can even go with the uh, 20.041. So I'll be selecting the 18.04. So the next step is that you have to choose the instance type. So uh, Amazon provides more than 50 kinds of instance, 50 types of instance, and uh, it it varies from project to project. Like if you want some extensive, do want to do some extensive tasks like uh, classifier development, machine learning, or running multiple processes together, then you might need GPUs for that. So there is a separate instance um, which enables the high load or load balancing or the GPU. Uh, uh, coverages for that instance and all these instances are like um, are of different cost ranges so you will be charged uh, on the per second basis on the on the uh, on the basis of the configuration which you have selected so for this tutorial I recommend to use or for any easy work I recommend to use the t2 micro because this is uh, this comes under a free tire which says that for first 12 months uh, every month you will be kept and get up to 750 hours it 750 hours is roughly 24 hours a day um, in each month you will be getting uh, time of instance you can run your instance for first 12 months then after that it will start charging you as per the normal service rate which you can go back to the pricing list and check that how much it's charging so technically it's free for first 12 months so we'll click on the next and this is a configuration instance details so your instance is running on cloud so there are certain clauses that you have to follow network subnet and everything but uh, for the tutorial or for your local purpose it really doesn't matter because you are going to do some uh, diy task or your personal um, development task so it doesn't matter that so you have to have some policies or network configurations you can leave it as it is it will automatically select the default ones and uh, so we can probably skip this step there's nothing much to change then comes the storage 
so by default it says the storage size is 8 GB uh, but if you hover over this uh, info icon it says that volume size must be greater than 0 and size of snapshot use okay so let me tell you so yeah it's here sorry so free tire uh, eligible customer can get up to 30 GB of EBS general purpose SSD so this is the general purpose SSD you can get up to 30 GB so according to a requirement you can set this up to 30 GB but for the for I would recommend to keep it as low as possible uh, because just for the tutorial purpose if you want or if you're if you're not doing some extensive tasks then this would suffice your needs otherwise if you are doing something heavy uh, some uh, which requires storage uh, uh, capacity uh, then you can increase it up to 30 so i won't increase it and you can also encrypt it uh, so you can use this default so encryption is always helpful because this allows to read and write data in a secure format and or if you don't want to do that just uh, keep it as not encrypted and let me tell you you can change all these settings afterward also that's why i'm not focusing much on the settings things so next i would say add tags so there are no tags available at this moment so these tags are like entry points to certain services so as we'll only be using the ec2 uh, for the tutorial so we won't be uh, creating tags so just in case you want to access your s3 bucket or you want to have these tags to create some lambda functions or anything related to your other services then you can probably create these tags and uh, these tags can r return some values which which you can use in your instance types or you can get uh, using your command line so these tags are easy and you can easily include these tags into your report also that uh, what all tasks you have completed or what all tasks were under running under your ec2 instance so we will again can probably skip this part then comes the configure the security group sorry for the disturbance so here you have got uh, multiple options you can set it to open so probably I would be selecting to all traffic so all traffic is like uh, uh, you can uh, e anyone can access it or because you will be using your local IPs or local uh, net so this settings is preferable or if you also want to add some other settings then you can have your SSH and using SSH you can say my IP so what this will do uh, so you will you are having all traffic access and one you are also having a uh, particular IP which is your private domain so when you will be connecting to your private domain uh, uh, the your own IP then the outer traffic won't be able to access it so so you can have uh, both of these rules or you can even cancel this and have this one IP one only so but I would for this I'll also add the all traffic one just to avoid some settings so okay so, I don't want any security groups. What I mean, what does it it's all traffic, all ports are selected? It says custom SSH admin. Okay. This is like strange. Okay, let's see. Yep. So this will always prompt you about your security because till the time you use the open traffic, this will always throw you an error. So you can avoid this uh, if in a, you the policies or security isn't an issue. You are just doing some DIYing. So you can probably ignore this message. So now this explains you about all the settings that you have created. So you can just visualize this and how the things look. And if it looks good, then you can probably hit the launch button. And now the next step comes to select an existing uh, pair. Uh, create a new pair so probably you won't be having an existing pair so you'll be creating a new key pair so when you create a new key pair it asks you uh, for a name so I'll say AWS TUT key and I would say download key pair and this will get downloaded 
a lot. Okay, and I'll say launch instance. Voila, so your instance is up. It says your instances are now launching. You can view your instances using this button. So clearly you are able to see that we have created this EC2 instance and uh, it says pending because uh, it takes a while to get started and once it starts it says running so we'll just wait for a couple of minutes yep so now you see that uh, the status of the instances has been changed to running uh, from pending so now your EC2 instance is running so this will do some pre-checks and everything in the background so you don't have to worry about it so uh, we have created our EC2 instance and it's running and uh, the most convenient way is also just to open this AWS console and change the status to running and directly connect it using some SSH client like putty or even from your command line using AWS CLI so I'll be showing both the methods at how you can access it so we are going to cover this in our next part so this will be a two part video in first part we understand how to create an instance in second part we will see that how we are going to connect it with the from our cli or the any ssh client thank you